some about Meyer's experiences with shopping carts. Um, at the West Lafayette Meyer, they have just recently implemented a new shopping cart, so we have that context of what it's like to implement a new shopping cart. Um, so he's going to share with us for a little bit. There will be time for you to ask more questions. And then um, there might be a few minutes, too, where he might be able to give you some feedback if you have some design ideas and you'd like his take on your ideas. Um, I think he might have a few minutes for that, too. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to Mike. Okay, well, as, uh, as I was introduced, my name is Mike McDonald. I'm the store director of the West Lafayette Meyer, and I've been with Meyer for 17 years now. Uh, and I've been in basically the retail business uh, most of my uh, life, all the way back to when I was in high school, working at a company called AMP, which most of you probably have never heard of. We used to, it's the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company. Uh, it was the largest supermarket in the world at one time. Uh, we called it Aches and Pains, but uh, that was a, a different era. Uh, how many of you, most of you I know are freshmen. How many of you went to Boilermaker Gold Rush and came over to the West Lafayette store when we had our Boilermaker Gold Rush night? <laughs> All right. Did everybody have a good time? Okay. The DJ had, uh, had a lot going on in the back and uh, you know, had a lot of free samples. So hopefully everybody got a chance to experience uh, Meyer. Uh, maybe for the first time. If I could do uh, show me. How many people were familiar with Meyer before uh, that night or before they came out? Okay, so there's quite a few. Uh, just a little bit about Meyer. I mean, we are uh, just basically a Midwestern company. Uh, we only are in the five state area out here of uh, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana. Uh, Kentucky and Illinois, uh, and so outside of that, most people aren't familiar with us, uh, but we will uh, be moving into Wisconsin next year, opening five stores there. Uh, Meyer's been around for uh, over 75 years uh, and started out in the grocery business, uh, and then in the 60s grew into this hypermark or uh, super center business, and uh, we like to say that then in the 80s, uh, Walmart got a look at what we were doing, they came up, they stole our idea, and they started uh, opening up super centers themselves. So, so we've been doing the super center business though uh, for quite some time. Um, I've been a store director with Meyer uh, for the, like the last 12 years, started off uh, in the, on the supermarket side as a supermarket lines leader, and I've had the opportunity to run three or four stores, so I've seen a, a number of different things, and, and we've done a lot of different things uh, with shopping carts. So uh, what I was, I kind of talked a little bit about that. You know, uh, when you think about it, there's basically, you know, we have seven ways uh, in the building that somebody can come in, uh, go to the shelf, and bring things up to the registers. Uh, we have our standard shopping cart, uh, which is uh, up at the front, that uh, four wheels, large basket, uh, which is basically what you see in, uh, in most any store uh, out there. Uh, a couple years ago, we took that basket and we made a, a kind of a miniature version of it. We made a smaller basket, uh, and that has become very popular. Uh, but the same sort of thing, four wheels, you know, it's a deeper basket. You can take that through with you. Uh, as well, we have uh, what we call Amigos. They're the motorized carts at the front. Uh, the store has eight of those, four on each side that have charging stations. Uh, basically there, the, uh, the average store size for Meyer is about 200,000 square feet. Uh, so if, uh, if you're elderly or if you uh, come in with a handicap or uh, if you've recently uh, broke or sprained a, uh, an ankle or something like that, uh, we have these carts available, the, the motorized ones that you can kind of take around the store and shop. Uh, as well as we have modified wheelchairs uh, that have a basket on the front. So if somebody wants to come through and, and push you around, uh, if you have somebody to help you can push you around, you can uh, use that as well. Uh, and then we have uh, shopping carts that have a child uh, seat screwed right into the top. So really for an infant, somebody uh, uh, under probably about six months old, you would want to, they have the ability to put them uh, in that cart and use it and get through the store. As well as we have the bench seats now. Uh, that cart's about twice as long as a, as a normal cart, but it uh, has the bench seat where two children can, can sit in there uh, and uh, a mom can get through and, and get through the store with that. Uh, and then people generally come in, sometimes they think they're just gonna grab a couple of items, they start walking through the store, and next thing you know, their arms are full. And so throughout the store, you'll see we have uh, red baskets uh, placed around the store. And people then grab the baskets and use that to, uh, to get up to the front as well. So uh, a lot of different, uh, different ways uh, that people do uh, shop throughout the store. Um, when we opened up the West Lafayette store just this past summer, uh, like was mentioned, we brought in uh, some brand new shopping carts. Uh, and what I did is we brought in brand new uh, of the traditional cart as well as the, uh, the, the miniature cart. So, and some of the changes that were made to those was, uh, first off, there are two cup holders now installed on the uh, carts. As most of you know, we live in a Starbucks world, 
and uh, people come in uh, and they want to have a place to put their Starbucks as they shop through. So we have two cup holders now on every shopping cart. Uh, as well, there's a, a basket in the front, a small basket that would hold, uh, that people can put like an envelope for coupons, they can put like a recipe type box, will fit right in the front there, which is also a new design so, uh, to help uh, be convenient with people. Um, the old carts had a child safety uh, that would, that, you know, so you could kind of latch your child in when they were in the seat. Uh, but what you'd notice if you ever been out shopping in a store that had the old ones, they just dangled. They just hung on the sides and then clipped in the front. These new ones came in and uh, they're retractable. So this way, they don't get caught on anything. Uh, if you go to every to retrieve a cart, those things could get kind of locked in together with a previous cart. You'd pull it, plastic piece might fly off, uh, you know, or you get, and, and so then the next person comes, they want to put their kid in there and then the tip doesn't work, it's broke. So this new retractable one has, uh, has really saved uh, on that issue. Uh, the other big thing is that these carts were designed um, with the safety in mind of when we have our people go out to retrieve the carts from the lot. If you nest 10 of these carts together, once you push them together, the center will rise and only the wheels at the front and the back uh, that are touching the ground. And so that makes it much easier to direct those carts from the parking lot into the building. Um, when you had a train of them and they were all out, of, once you kind of got going one direction, you had to stop and kind of yank the carts around to get them to turn and to move in. So with this design now, it's much easier for, uh, for our team members when they're bringing the carts in and much safer to kind of direct them through the lot. You don't want a cart to get away from you and hit a car or, or to hit a person as they're walking. So, so that's a, you know, a real safety issue that was put in. Uh, as well as they redesigned the smaller cart. Before it really was just a basket with the wheels. Uh, the new smaller carts now, they put in the child seat as well. They also have the retractable straps on those. Uh, and they were, uh, they made it much deeper, so people could actually get more into them than they were before because they've become very popular. Certainly popular in this area, and sometimes it's just one person shopping for themselves and not uh, not shopping for the whole family where they don't need the larger cart. So, um, so that's kind of a little bit on, on those aspects of the cart. One of the things we also did in the design of the building, uh, with the new building, is we have a whole separate area for the shopping carts when they're brought into the building. So. Traditionally, we used to bring the shopping carts right into the store, put them up right by the entrance. Uh, as you came in through the front doors, you went, you got your cart, and then you could start shopping. Now we have almost like a garage area uh, built off the vestibule. So as you come through the front door, the carts are lined up just, uh, just to the side. And in this area, we've, uh, we've installed like a drain. Uh, we put heaters up above them. So during the winter when it's snow or, or it rains and there's ice, uh, the heater helps to melt the carts off, dry them off, uh, and then that water is collected, goes down the drain, and it's not being drugged through the store. Uh, as well, as when you get that cart at that part of the building, they'll take you through, and we have a long run of carpet uh, as you go from that door into the next door, and as you work yourself into the store. And this helps to get the wheels cleared off, helps to get, um, once again, any other residue, anything that might cause a slip and fall at the front of the store. So. Once again, with safety in mind, we put this, in, uh, this in process in place so that you don't get uh, you know, puddles up near the front, you don't get possibly leaves or things like that right up on the front. So if somebody walks in, they slip, they fall, now we have an injury to either a customer or to a, to a team member. So um, certain things that we've seen, I can tell you, like over the years that have changed with different designs and that, uh, you know, one of the big things is, is kind of sanitation. You'll notice now at, at our stores, most stores now, uh, we'll have a sanitation, uh, you know, wipes right there by the shopping carts. People are always wanting you know, to wipe down the handles, wipe their hands off. Uh, we have those available. Uh, years ago, there was a, we tried some, uh, an outside company brought in a, uh, a cart for children that would play a video on the inside, and then there was a basket on the back, and you could put, uh, you could go through and shop, your child could sit in there, you put like uh, 50 cents in, and you could, you could push them around the garden, and everybody thought, wow, what a great idea, it entertains the kids. Um, and then mom can do her shopping while she's, she's pushing them around. Obviously, what the number of things that we found that happened with that, uh, if the carts got left outside and got wet or, or with the weather, uh, you know, the video equipment eventually did not, uh, didn't function as well. It took a lot of work to try to keep the upkeep on them. Uh, and then the other part was the sanitation part of it, keeping it clean. You've got younger children in there. Um, it's a big plastic, uh, you know, mold just like a uh, little tight sort of car they're sitting in. Uh, they may have runny noses, coughing, sneezing, 
and it was hard to make sure that that area was getting cleaned and, and kept sanitized and that. So the company that actually was providing those for us, they eventually actually had to go out of business, expect it back up because the maintenance of it, it was, it was too hard. So it was uh, an example of something that sounded like a great idea. Somebody tried to, tried to make it work, but it, it ended up that it was uh, too costly and uh, there was obvious misses there, uh, say what, what people were really were interested in. That they want to put their kid uh, in there if the previous kid had been in there and had been sneezing on everything and wiping his nose with his hand and you know spreading germs in there. So uh, kind of a different uh, look on how something might have went. As well, years ago, uh, if you remember, there was a, a shopping cart design that Kroger used where they had a, a basket. It was raised much higher. It used to flip up and nest uh, like that. Um, and they used those for the for their whole company. But what ended up happening was because it was raised up higher, the, it would get too heavy, they'd get top heavy, or they might put their, their child in there instead of in the safety seat, they'd put them in the actual cart. Once again, it'd get too heavy on that corner, they'd make a turn, and the whole cart would go over. Uh, and if you see now at Kroger's and Payglasses, they've had to take, and they've eliminated that whole style of cart, and have gone to one step deeper, uh, deeper cart there. So. And if I have any questions or anything like that, then I can to. Yes? Um, is there a problem with theft of the cart? Now, the, you know, obviously you see carts sometimes uh, along the sides of the roads, you know, somebody takes one uh, away. We don't, in this area, we don't have, a, have an issue with it. Uh, I can tell you, I grew up in, uh, in the Plainfield, New Jersey, and, uh, and like I said, I told you, I worked for A&P there, and at that A&P, we actually had to put, we had metal posts all out along the front part of the building where the shopping carts wouldn't fit through, so that people could only take them out so far, and uh, and then that way they would have to bring, they would drive the cars up, unload, and we bring the cars back into the building. It was an area where you could get uh, some theft like that. So that certainly, it, 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 it's not an issue for us. It hasn't been an issue right here, but it can be an issue in a in a bigger uh, city area, some places where that could be an issue. So uh, those are ways that it got around it uh, years ago. Yes. Uh, we actually have a company we call the French Company. Uh, they are a, a, a shopping cart maintenance company and cleaning service that um, we come they, twice a year. We have spring cleaning and fall cleaning, and they come out. Uh, it's a company in Ohio, and they they work uh, strictly on shopping carts, and they'll come through and they'll maintenance all our carts. So what we'll do throughout the course of the six months, you know, if we get one with a bad wheel. Uh, if we get one, you know, that's, you know, if one gets, truly gets crushed in some sort of uh, accident, uh, there's no repair on something like that. But we can usually, I would, in, in a six month period, we'll probably have 30 to 40 carts that need some sort of, uh, some sort of work on it. Normally it's in the wheels. Uh, obviously if anybody has, uh, you know, one of the biggest complaints you'll get is when you get one of those carts that thumps and you're walking through and bump, 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 because you've gotten a flat spot on one of the tires. Um, so one of the things that, the, that over the last few years that they came up with is making that, the tire replacement, much easier. That where you can just you know, bolt it off, put a new one on. But that's what it is. So the, a company will come in and they'll, they'll maintenance all the cars for us. They'll power wash them uh, and go through and check all the ones that we've put aside that may have, uh, have an issue. So as far as straight out replacing them, uh, Really, they, they're, pre they're pretty durable, uh, unless one gets like hit by a car or something like that. And usually, it's beyond repair. So, uh, you know, at any one time, you know, we when we opened the store, we had over 600 of the uh, the larger carts and then 300 of the small ones, uh, plus some of the other. So, you know, at any time, we have almost a thousand carts. So, we don't usually, normally have to do too much replacing. Yes, sir. What would you say, like the cost? Um, you know, I, to be honest, I, I, I don't know what the initial cost was to, to bring in that many at the start. Uh, that was over above uh, what I was working on at the time. But I know that you know we we pay. Uh, I, I know I, I see the bills from the French company. It's about three four thousand dollars to have them come in on this maintenance schedule uh, every year to do the power washing, do the cleaning, uh, oil all the bearings, and all that. So throughout throughout the year, you're going to pay three four dollars, three or four hundred, three or four thousand in uh, in maintenance. But I, I'm not sure what the actual cost is. Startup would be to, to stock the entire store with them. Yeah. And your, uh, what was that, 20 years, 17 years experience? Yes. Yeah. Has, 
have you ever encountered any ideas to completely replace the system as it exists, like do away with the shopping cart or find a new idea or even just something that's, uh, yeah, changing it up like that? The only, the only thing that's probably, you know, that, that we look at as a company uh, going forward is going to be much more uh, online ordering of, uh, of groceries where then people are going to drive up and pick up the groceries. You're going to have an area where there's going to pick up. We're actually going to be opening a store next year uh, up in, uh, in Michigan, uh, store number 158, uh, we're on Grand Rapids. It's going to be the first store where we're going to implement uh, kind of a separate shop uh, be attached to, it'll be attached to the store, but it's going to be an area that's just going to have your um, your real basic items, milk, eggs, bread, uh, you know, a top 200 type of uh, area, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to try to implement where people are going to be able to order online, and then say that within the next, you know, in a two-hour window, you're going to be able to come in, there'll be a drive-through area, and they're going to be able to pick up their groceries right there. Um, how long it would take, you know, you know, we discussed that with our teams to let them know that that was something the company was working on. Um, to implement something like that in single store type markets, uh, in, in what we consider like our rural markets, is probably well, are quite a ways down the road. Uh, but where we are going to be looking at that is in more of our metropolitan areas, you know, Detroit, Chicago. Uh, we're ready to move into Milwaukee. Uh, you know, maybe as we put some more new stores in, maybe even in Indianapolis. But um, so that would be an area that somehow will eventually maybe eliminate some of the in-store traffic. Uh, in the rural, rural stores, you know, we say rural, but you know, we still see people want to come in and they want to be able to, they still want to be able to come in and pick out the meat they want, pick out the produce they want. Uh, they don't have that confidence yet where you can maybe just say you want to order a bag of apples online and know that you're going to get what you're looking for. So people still want to be able to come in, feel, touch, uh, and that. So. Uh, at this point, you know, completely eliminating the shopping cart, I have not uh, come up with anything or seen anything at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, how is uh, our reusable bag integration and implementation, how is that? Are you seeing a lot of that? How is that affecting your school? Okay, the, uh, so the recyclable bag that people actually purchase and bring in, or, or the... Uh, we basically have three systems for bags now, when you think about it. You know, we still carry traditional paper bags, that, uh, but people have to ask for those. We'll have them at the registers if somebody wants to use one of those. Uh, we use a plastic t-shirt bag uh, at all the registers. Uh, that's the standard bag you see in, in most stores now. Uh, that's a recyclable bag, uh, and also at both entrances, we, we, do, we will recycle those bags for people, not just our bags, but anybody's bag. So people can come to the store, drop off uh, that for recycling. We uh, have an area in our back room where we store those throughout, a, throughout the week, and then once a week when we send back uh, all of our recyclable items like uh, pallets, uh, cardboard, and things like that, those all go back on trucks every week. And then the other thing we have is the reusable bag. Uh, we sell those uh, at the check lanes, usually for like uh, for a dollar, uh, as well as there's often times promotions where we give those, give those away. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies are doing it. so. I mean, you'll see probably, we probably get about 10%, 10-15% of people who come in with a stack of the reusable bags, put them in their cart, uh, do their shopping, and then when they get up front, they use that, that actual cloth reusable bag. So, um, like I said, three different ways that people are, uh, are bagging their, their goods. Yep? Um, do you feel comfortable with customers using the Taking it from the from the building, like, like using their own, going in with the store with it, and then going out with their own shopping cart. Yeah, I mean, usually what we see there is a um, there's a portable cart that, that people do have. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a two wheel, looks a little bit almost like more like a suitcase that'll fold up that you'll occasionally see people uh, have with them, uh, especially if, you know if, if people take. Uh, even if they still take the bus or whatever, sometimes they do have their own kind of cart. We don't have an issue with somebody bringing one in like that, uh, but I, it, it's very rare that we, that we see that anymore. Yeah? you know any statistics or numbers about the number of people that bring children into the store that need to be accommodated for in some way by the cart, like the seed of some sort of or straps? Yeah, no, I don't, I, mean, I don't have any statistical information myself on that. I can tell you that our, you know, our poor shopper is, is a female shopper uh, between the age of like 28 
and, and 37, uh, which is you know is the, usually the family uh, time. That it's, you know, we gear the store towards you know towards the family shopping. That's part of our core value. Uh, is, is family being a family-run company. So, uh, it, generally speaking, you, you can really tell uh, during the summer. You can tell when it's uh, when it's a, a holiday, uh, and you can see when the kids are out of school and, and moms are having to bring them uh, on, uh, on these holidays, and you see them all in the store. So uh, we try to make it uh, we try to make it family friendly. Yes. Do you think that in the future it would be beneficial to maybe like have stores stop carrying shopping carts and people bringing in their own carts, like especially the ones that are like in the city and have smaller space for like storage of the shopping carts and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, uh, we're looking more and more into some of those metros. We actually opened a uh, like the very first uh, new downtown Detroit store uh, about two years ago. It's actually two floors uh, because of a limited amount of space. I, I don't see us uh, eliminating cars because it's a convenience that I think we have to have uh, for the customers at this point in time. But um, we are trying to, like I said, we're looking also at a site down in Indianapolis off of 16th Street, which is going to be, you know, it's going to be closer to downtown. Uh, than we are in any of our other stores. So uh, I would see that they will probably use, uh, they, they probably will go to just using the smaller carts, not the, not the traditionally larger carts, because what we find in those areas, people have a tendency to shop uh, a couple of times a week uh, instead of like in, in our areas, in our single store markets. Somebody comes in, they kind of do that family, they do that weekly shopping. Uh, but in the cities, people kind of shop a little more day to day. They'll, you know, they pick up a couple things for dinner that night, maybe the next night, and then they come back two days later uh, and shop again. So, so the so the, uh, the average basket size is much smaller. But I don't think we would ever would eliminate the carts because I think it's a convenience that people have uh, come to expect. Yep. That, that two floor store, how does that accommodate the carts? We've got a, a actually have an escalator system that you can the, the cart can wheel right into. There's a little pocket that it takes it back up. Uh, I haven't seen the one there at that store personally, but if anyone's ever been into an Ikea, the Ikeas have those as well. Uh, you can push your shopping cart right under the escalator and it, uh, and it goes up to the other floor. So similar to that design. Yep. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, virtual grocery stores? Virtual? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that's I think that's going to be part of this online sort of shopping where people are. Is that what you're no, it's getting? kind of like one of those grocery stores where you go and then instead of picking up the items on your own, you uh, you scan a code and you press the button and it will add everything onto your cart or what virtual cart, mm -hmm. but on the actual store, and then you'll pick up the items on your way out. You'll pick it up on the way out. Yeah. So yeah. You, so you can deliver the eight cards. I say, you know, as a as a company, we're not we're not moving in any direction towards that. So I don't know what we'll see in the future. Certainly, uh, you know, we continue to try to do more and more things online. When it comes to, uh, we have a program, M Perks, uh, which is a, a couponing system that people use online. It helps you to, to do your shopping uh, and, and, and save money that way instead of ha handling uh, paper coupons. Um, so I, I I don't doubt that we will continue to see more and more of that as, as time goes. But, I know as a company, we're not working on anything uh, at that level yet. Yeah. What would you say the number one complaint about shopping carts would be, just in general? The, I mean, normally, is if somebody gets a, the the biggest complaint you have is somebody gets a bad one that doesn't roll real well, and somebody, or if you get one that's uh, that's gotten just dirty or something, and somebody will bring it up to your attention and say, "Oh, this is this one's a mess" or something like that. Um, so it's usually not anything. Too functional. The other thing is, uh, you know, a, a lot of people use the the motorized carts. You know, we have a lot of people who, who want to have those. So that a complaint we often get is that you know they they'd like to see more of those. Um, you know, like I said, at our store we we have eight. They're all brand new, so they all work very well. But we'll get on a Saturday where people will actually be waiting for someone to, to get through the store and drive those up. I know those uh, those run about eight thousand dollars a piece. Uh, those carts uh, individually. So uh, to have more than that, and then to have the room to charge them and have it set up, we found that eight seems to be the right number. But that is a complaint when people have to kind of, you know, let's say if you're in there on a bum leg and uh, you have to wait for, for a motorized cart, uh, that's kind of a complaint we'll get. But really the biggest thing is if you get that one that's squeaking real bad and someone gets about halfway through the shopping and they just they throw their hands up, they're tired of pushing it, or if it's kind of limping along, uh, 
that's usually if somebody brings that up to us, then we'll take it to the back where we have a section where we keep those until we get them through and get maintenance again. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, as far as the, the upfront operation, uh, we have a labor uh, model that we use, uh, you know, every day, you know, where we kind of track customer counts. Obviously, things always are in flux because you can't count it one day, we exactly like the other, but we use, you know, we use a model to try to make sure we have enough registers open. The other thing then what we do is we have, um, we always have register trained people in the store uh, working in either our GM or fashion areas. Uh, so we have a hot board there. So if the uh, service coordinator, who is uh, the team leader who will kind of be on the outside of the registers, if they would start to see it backing up, if they see, you start to see two or three people backing up in line, then they'll start making calls to people so we can get additional registers open. Uh, and then as well, and then we schedule utility workers as well, and those are the cart retrievers, uh, the people who help with carry outs and that. And we use the same system to try to have them scheduled as well. And if we have a day where we just, where it's going crazy and we can't keep, those days when you can't even keep, you, know, you have 900 carts and you can't keep them in the store, then we just we just put out a call and we just get people outside and help bring them in. So. <coughs> Amigos, um, did you have to change anything about the store, like make the aisles wider or anything? Are they the same? No, I mean, they, measurement-wise, they're about the same width across. Uh, we try to make sure, you know, one of the things, you know, when we, that we look at when we talk about the customer experience is we, we talk about uh, friendly, uh, and one of the things that we consider friendly is clean, and a lot of times what people consider clean isn't just uh, maybe a piece of paper on the floor or something like that, but they consider when things get cluttered that now they're not clean. Uh, so we've kind of taken as a rule of thumb is that we, you know anytime we have displays, you know we run displays down our center aisles, we, we run displays around the back of the T aisle. We try to make sure we have uh, you know we have a six foot gap between everything because that's basically the length that two shopping carts can pass. Um, so we kind of use that as a rule of thumb. We won't put things down. Uh, you'll see sometimes stores will put side stacks down their aisles. We try to keep the aisles clear once again just to give that. You know, have it clutter free so the people can get down. We try to make sure that every aisle that carts can pass, uh, you know, and never get to a point where you can get kind of get bottleneck in that. So, yeah. How has the design of shopping carts changed since you started working in our retail? Well, I mean, one of the one of the big things you know they used to really. But if I go all the way back to thinking when they were like a silver metal uh, cart, uh, you would see them. They would rust very badly. Um, and, and, they, and they really would have a tough time, uh, you know, functioning when they're out and they're exposed to that weather. So one thing is, that, you know, they're getting the, the coating they use on them now keeps them much, uh, much nicer, and they're much also much easier to clean. Uh, and the other thing then too is just the fact that they've, they've become so uh, focused on child safety, you know, in making sure that there's a spot for the child to sit that you can strap them in. Uh, before uh, I can tell you. I can't remember if I mentioned it here or what it was when we were uh, back talking beforehand. But uh, I've got three children. Um, when, when they were young, my wife would go grocery shopping, and she had to put the two youngest ones in a cart, and she'd push that one. And then my oldest daughter would push the empty cart, and they would have to then put the groceries in there. So, um, like I say, with the, uh, with the outset of being able to have some of those bench seats and just having a way to be able to come in and shop with an infant or two or three kids, and kind of keep keep them corralled. That's that's just been a big uh, big change and big innovation over the years. Mm -hmm.